Hello everyone and welcome to the back nine of the opening round at the 2019 Nantucket Open. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, along with Big Germ, Jeremy Colling and Germ. We saw some crazy wind, but it doesn't seem to be affecting people like Ricky Wysocki. Uh Ricky Wysocki, Calvin Heimberg. I mean, even Brinster, he's four under. He's right behind Calvin. Chris Collette's doing well at two under. The whole card is under par when we weren't even sure if we were going to play this round. We thought that it might be a one-round tournament. And uh, But, yeah, it's, it's been impre very impressive golf. Some really great putts made, too, which that's the last thing you expect to see on a day like this. Also off in the corner, Matt Graham, a big shout-out to him. He went out and you see some of the FPO action during the second round. Uh, he acted as cameraman last year. This year, him and AJ kind of split the responsibilities. Yeah. And he's doing amazing things with kids disc golf. So quick shout out as he's uh, capturing some bonus footage as well there. And we're watching Ricky not quite make the bend maybe there on 10. Yeah, that was uh, definitely early, right? And you get to see Calvin just throw the dream shot down the middle, skipping into the perfect spot. And Chris Collette with a – he just now released the disc. <laughs> that was <laughs> – a little bit late there, and he's back in the corner. Still has to make the edge here, and this is going to roll back into the woods or bounce back, rather. Yeah, a little bit of struggle. I, if clearly on this course, if you're not just off the fairway, but if you're hitting early, it just uh, magnifies all of your troubles here. And ooh, speaking of hitting early, uh -oh. that is a bad punishing kick there for Steve. And I don't even know who we're looking at at this point. Uh, Oh, that's Ricky, isn't it? Yeah, Ricky playing from that right side, and he's not getting much distance there, and he still finds himself off the fairway. And hitting the fairways on this course is paramount. You just have to avoid getting the situations where you see Ricky right there just totally handcuffed without any sort of uh, creative options. And if Ricky doesn't have any options, you know that it's a bad spot because he's got his bag, his shopping bag there of discs. <laughs> And uh, he usually is able to find some way out of the rough. Uh, one of the best scramblers in the game. And look at this shot with a Valkyrie. It's just stupid good. That is stupid good. Thrown with a disc that he found on the course the day before. Anheuser with his leg sticking out of the rough. I mean, that is so many ways of being incredible. That's, that's just awesome. As he's scrambling, just trying to save the par. Now, not quite the opening hole that he had, which is when he found himself on another fairway and still got up and down for birdie. But uh, to, to walk away with a par here, that's what he set himself up for. Very impressive. Yeah, very well done. And Colette <clears throat> throwing the, the flick roller there vertical. That thing needed a little bit more right angle cut to be able to, to avoid going back in the woods. But uh, he's done just that. And Calvin, after that, perfect tee shot he set up with a, a short birdie putt i believe i said to calvin here and i know i said it on six that might have been the longest drive i've ever seen on hole 10 yep. uh, it, where calvin had put it i mean he's just out here lacing yep. these fairways colette trying to do some work here we find him in the, oh, probably right around circle two's edge And now you see not much wind on this flag. I don't know if things are calming down or if it's just a matter of where they're positioned, but not nearly as much wind on this one. Yeah, the conditions certainly improved throughout the day. Uh, the main worry that we were having was sometime in the middle of the night through the uh, early morning, we were still expecting rain throughout the day. And that is something that we were very fortunate to have uh, avoided. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the conditions were incredibly windy and cold in the morning you know we're in the first week of september here or is this the second week of september oh, I, still I, the first week yeah so early september so you're i mean we're still talking about pretty warm conditions in most parts of the country and um you know besides aside from a colette who's out here as a local wearing shorts and a t-shirt everyone else is uh bundled up in sweatpants and jackets well, and what these players, uh, and it's not going to matter much to these players, but the hurricane has actually moved up and over through Nantucket, up the East Coast, and now it's heading up to the other big event that's taking place up in Canada, 
And yeah. some of these conditions literally are uh, just hours from reaching Canada and yeah. really impacting that event. Yeah, the, uh, Nate Sexton was up there at PEI, Prince Edward Island, and uh, he had some funny videos and some really interesting stories from the uh, conditions up there. And uh, that was uh, pretty incredible conditions all throughout the East Coast. I believe their event actually got uh, shortened by an entire round, or at least a few holes and a round, uh, as opposed to this one, which just got pushed back a couple hours. And Brinster oh, with a great tee wow. shot here. <laughs> oh, that is outstanding drive. That is so much farther than you can get the sidearm here with getting that full flex. And Colette, the nice inside line sidearm, miss everything. Oh, yeah, that's really good shot. That's up there where Calvin's is. Maybe not the greatest uh, result there with the unfortunate lie, but um, that is still real. That's a bomb forehand to get all the way up there. And a great effort there. You'll have a short putt for birdie on this very difficult hole 11. This is one of the most uh, specific landing zones you're going to have on the course as far as par four is. The second shot can be so difficult if you don't throw a great tee shot. And Calvin is just out here shredding. Wow. <laughs> it just <laughs> Oh wreck. Oh. You know, I'm gonna give a I'm gonna give a little nod to great editing for leaving that in there because that's that's an important story that needs to be talked about. <laughs> well, Rick, uh, so, you know, you shop local, support the locals. I think Rick's doing it all this weekend. <laughs> Uh, uh, look, you know, he's trying to bring drive. stuff to the, the Nantucket you know, economy and whatever Rick can do, you know, in disc golf. That's what we're here for. I, I have not. That is the farthest drive I've seen on this hole in, uh, in my four years of playing the event. And, and Steve just made this one look like child's play. Rick has got a tough putt for the uh, for the par. And well, a tough putt for most people. <laughs> yeah. He's able to drive that nose right through the wind. There's so much velocity, and uh, it really – wind rounds are usually when you see Rick shine. Yeah, Colette, do it. <laughs> Whip it at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, One of these a... days, you're going to see that. Someone is just going to lose their mind, forget where they are, forget what they're doing, and just rip a second one at the basket, and I, I hope I'm there to see it. <laughs> <laughs> There's Calvin. So Calvin quietly sneaks in there. And with that birdie and the par by Rick, Calvin has knotted himself up with Waisaki wow. as they're both sitting at seven under through 11. I don't care what the conditions are. If, if, if you said, hey, how would yeah. you feel about being seven under through 11? Every single player would be like, yeah, I'd be, I'd be cool with that. I'd be pumped. Yeah, I mean, it could be 72 degrees and calm and sunny. And, and uh, yeah, that would be a great score. But these guys are doing it in a hurricane. So take that, Martha. That was the name of the hurricane, right? Hurricane Martha? Uh, mm. If it wasn't, we're just going to call it at that. <laughs> a great shot there by... Again, just yeah. flawless. Flawless. Absolutely picture-perfect backhand drive from Calvin. What's not picture-perfect as we're watching Brinster with the standstills. This is a difficult hole in terms of coverage because it's so dark on that T area. Yeah. And then they're throwing out into that light area. That's why you see some of those you know, washed out colors. It can be really challenging to film this one. And that's a great shot by Rick. Yeah, that is such a technically uh, challenging shot to force over the really overstable flat top firebird with just such control to go right down the middle of the fairway and then, um, and then not go long. Cause that's another thing. This is a very short landing zone. If you go long, it's just as bad as being left or right. So you really have to make sure that you pump the brakes before you uh, go into the woods long. And Brinster's trying to do some work from that right side fairway, and he's just really in a world of hurt with not a lot of options. Yeah, 441, it seems like it might even be shorter than that. And um, this can be one of the most challenging par fours if you don't get off the tee, and one of the easiest par fours if you do. But um, that tee shot is just absolutely crucial. And look at this effort. Oh, and Steve catching the one tree left. I don't think it had enough steam to get all the way to the pin, but that might have set up a, a look for par, and unfortunately he's going to have to settle for most likely a, a bogey at best. 
Chris was fortunate not to find himself too far off the fairway. I mean, he was right side, and that, that's just a mistake that uh, seemed a little unforced there. Yeah, and this is another um, kind of a textbook how call where you have two, you have one shot off the tee, but then you've got two options for your approach. Um, Calvin really only has one option here. He has to go with the maybe the primary gap here with the um, most players are going to throw, which is the forehand. And that one just sticking to his fingers for a bit longer than he'd like. He'd like to have that one back, I'm sure. Yeah, after putting himself in such a great position off the tee, that that feels like you just threw away a stroke with what mm-hmm. Calvin, you know, his little mistake there. What is this? Forehand number three on the round? Yeah. Dialed yeah. up. That's a nice one. Oh, actually, that's going to be <laughs> – it was, it was a nice release, but that is more work than I'm sure he'd like to have for the bogey. So Calvin's a, left with this for a birdie, and I was going to say, this is about as long as his previous throw was. Oh, oh wow. Uh, it's stop rolling. Well, a, a cool feature to keep your eye on on the course when you're when you're just watching the coverage is uh, there are all these tree segments that were placed in fun positions, sometimes in the fairway, sometimes up by the green. There's a little leaning tree um, set up by the green on this hole. But it's just like little fun things that decorate the course that I'm sure they would just cut down logs as they're setting up the course. And uh, gives it a little bit extra character. And uh, it's a fun little signature that you see out here in Nantucket. Yeah, there's not really any water to deal with or, or any elevation for that matter. So yeah, I feel is- like all those other little you know nice touches are here and, and available mm-hmm. for the players. Yeah, this is the flattest course, I think, in the history of uh, – <laughs> of golf and that that includes golf that includes putt putt um <laughs> this is you are at sea level here on the island and there are there's like a hill that maybe goes up four feet on a whole nine and that's that's about the elevation that you are exposed to out here we see these guys working hard on hole 12 a couple of bogeys kelvin had to work hard to save his par and Ricky's going to ultimately walk away with the par. So those guys remain at seven under, and Steve Brinster's uh, four behind them. We've got a, a third of the course to go. I, and I just see this now. Ricky didn't even have an umbrella. Uh, yeah, no, he didn't even have one packed along. He was he was going, wow. uh, he was rolling the <laughs> dice all day, that's for sure. <laughs> God, Calvin just straight lacing this drive here on hole 13. Ricky going a little bit wider, but he's got that champion metal flake destroyer that is just incredibly overstable, and that's uh, found its way right to the sweet spot. And Brinster going with, I believe, a 2015 Brinster Swirly Star Tour Series destroyer. I think that's actually the one that I found for him at Lake Winthrop and returned to him. Well, you also saw... Deeper inside the game statistics. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh. oh. Ooh. Yeah, what I was going to mention a moment ago it was that we saw Brinster also put a towel down. And I, again, mm. just have to talk about the pro move that that is. Chris is struggling here. But, uh, you know, if your footing isn't right, even if, if it's a little slick, that could be on concrete or one of these rubber mats, uh, having that extra towel along. To, to hit that mark is something so, that's really good move. One thing you, you're going to want to avoid is going backhand tee shot, backhand tee shot, and then putting and still being short of the short tee pad. And that is exactly what Chris has unfortunately done here. But this is a great looking shot as it's just getting lifted by the wind, dropped down, but uh, a nice fourth shot from Chris. Yeah, the, the struggles here on, on 13. They are very real. Brinster trying to assess the wind. Now, it's funny. You could kind of feel or, or I should say see the wind a little bit by where he was standing. But then up at the basket, you see that flag is not blowing at all. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's what these tall, thickly wooded uh, greens will provide is uh, a little reprieve from the wind. But it's also kind of 
false because you know that the wind is out there. You just don't see the flag moving that much. Yeah, look at it just above, uh, sorry, Kelvin's head up into the right, just how much those branches are blowing back and forth, but almost nothing at the green as he goes a little deep. And we've got tricky putts coming up for Ricky and Calvin. Steve is absolutely parked up to the beautiful touch of the approach. And Chris has this for bogey. Oh, my that. goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> one of that would have been one of the best bogey saves you'd ever see. And just behind both Ricky and Calvin, you can see Tournament Central. That's back by where uh, hole number one actually is. Well, that's not where hole one is. That's just Tournament Central, I should say. Closer yep. to hole 16, actually. Mm -hmm. The tent is all set up, and lunch and everything else is getting uh, prepped for everyone. And Ricky and Calvin both capitalizing on their birdie putts both moving to eight under and that tournament central is a very fun place to be it's you know, a lot of tournaments you'll you know go out and get your food if you're if it's a multiple round and a day type event um but this is a very cool atmosphere here where they they provide a a, a buffet and a bunch of really good food to enjoy as calvin and ricky are going the wrong direction maybe they're trying to get some snacks they are yep that's what they're going for <laughs> um but uh, yeah, and, and a very great lunch provided by uh, by Todd and Louisa and uh, Barry, who comes up from Dallas Fort Worth area to help out with the event every year. Calvin, just come on, man! You are playing too well. This is incredible stuff. I mean, nine down through fourteen, and Rick doing what uh, most of the rest of us do. Yeah, not going to be able to keep pace with. Calvin on this one, and this hole, of course, aced by Austin Turner in a, a previous Nantucket Open with the yeah, lefty those, forehand. The year that he won the tournament and won the Raz round, which is the twofer, the, the rare twofer. You never see that done before. It's never been done since or before. Well, don't spoil it. We don't know what's going to happen yet this year. Uh, well, I mean, there was a year after that. I'm saying <laughs> okay. Calvin Heimberg won the Raz round last year, but um, Zach Melton won the event. So oh. we have yet to see who wins this year. Is Ricky is going to save the par with a nice forehand approach? Just grabbing metal from the short tee, no big deal. And this is another one where it's short, two thirty-eight. You really want to get the birdie, but uh, oh, gosh, way more difficult yeah. than we saw on say hole eight. You know, that's 238 as well. But this one, uh, so much more of a controlled shot. Yeah, this is a this is a very tricky birdie. I, I You certainly would like to get it, but I don't think it's one that you have uh, circled on your scorecard, you know, and your game plan is, like, must get in any way. Um, it's, this, is, this is kind of, like, as, as much as a 238-foot hole can be a bonus, I feel like this is kind of in that range. Is Calvin running his name down on another CTP? Now he's oh. just getting downright greedy and he has moved to the leader on this feature group and uh, I think you picked a pretty good feature group to, to film this round as you're showing the, the greatest New England player of all time with Steve Brinster the local Chris Collette, and then two players who are on top of their game and were just making this hurricane round look like a normal day in the park. During the little bit of a backup, Steve Brinster just uh, helping out on the course maintenance thanks to the hurricane. Yeah, well, there's the rain. It's coming down just a little bit, but that's mostly just left over from the day before. Uh, smash. Yeah, he's claiming that it's too tight, but it, it turns out, I believe, to be a pretty good shot. Unfortunately, I don't think AJ was in good position to grab the catch there, uh, so, which can be really tough with all the trees and the blocking that can happen out on this course. So I can tell you that we were the group in front of these guys, and I, we were tapping out our putts, and we see this drive come up. And we're, is that a drive? What, is that a second shot? Are they throwing in on us? Like, we had no idea that was off the tee. That is truly smashed, like unbelievably far. 
and Brinster faking me out. I, <laughs> I wasn't anticipating the Heiser route and uh, it, it, very effective. It's a much smaller gap, but when you hit it, as he did, uh, it proves to be pretty effective for him. Yeah, that was a great drive. Colette laying down the roller. That's an interesting line. Come on, Risley. Let's get a catch can there. Oh, I wanted to see it fly or roll for that matter. Not an easy thing to do, catch cam. No, sometimes, uh, again, when you're on a course like this especially, uh, it's just really tough to know what's going on and where people are throwing from and then trying to, you know, be far enough down the fairway that it works and, and is useful. And Chris. Oops. Yeah, just a little low. <laughs> or, or, or a lot low. <laughs> Let's see if he can adjust. Oh, that's yeah. much better height. Oh, yeah. That's a great recovery. Mm-hmm. And Steve with a little bit of butter left on that potato. And Rick almost making another ridiculous highlight eagle. <sighs> and Brinster short of... Oh, it doesn't oh, matter. Yes. Yeah. That's a good one. And you throw a great drive like that and then leave your approach that short, making that putt is just like rebirth. You know, you, you, you had something, you lost it, and then you, you got it back. Wow, and a solid putt by Heimberg. So uh, although out of position off the tee, wow. puts himself to circle's edge, and he, that's going to put him to 10 under. I, as... <laughs> that's kind of an inconceivable number when you when we're going into this round. I, I, no one is going to shoot double digits. It's not it's not happening today. But not only is it happening today, there's there's three more birdie holes left to maybe make that score even lower. So now this is the hole that we saw Ricky as Calvin <laughs> plays the Ooh, bang shot. <laughs> Kate, and that tree is in your head when you're throwing the backhand. I, I definitely am not surprised to see somebody hit it, but uh it forces like that Heiser flip play, which isn't really a great play when it's so windy. So you see Ricky even turning over his metal flake destroyer. Well, and a moment ago you saw it, when you see the short tee and the stump, if you think all the way back to hole one, that's where Ricky was standing to look <laughs> at <laughs> to look at the adjacent fairway, which is to their right at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and Brinster's going to go traditional, just put it right up the middle of the fairway. Uh, AJ will pan over and show us where the basket is here. Uh, this is a – you're kind of planning on this for a birdie, aren't you? Uh, well, I actually just walked off the hole after throwing in a shot from 300 feet. So I guess I was kind of planning for an eagle. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, no big deal then. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is definitely one of the holes you're you're looking at as a musket birdie. Um, it, it's just too wide of a fairway, not that far for two shots. Um, you know, a guy like Calvin, when it's calm, he's getting almost putts. In fact, I believe he did have a putt in in 2018 at this event and um i don't know if he made it or not but this is a hole that you expect to get a three at worst but um if you have an errant drive i mean the rough is no different on this hole than it is anywhere else in the course and getting out is as you can see very tricky to do so waisaki after the backhand tee shot goes oh. forehand and what a weird air for him to make with so much room there mm -hmm. to find that one tree on the left side. Yep, that's a that's one he definitely wants back. And Steve as well, not quite getting the distance turnover enough. Still getting the distance just about right, though. So although it's not straight in line with the basket, he is still no more than 25 feet away. So Calvin doing the... A little bit of work here, just trying to get up and down and save the par, and he's in a good spot for that. And Colette has thrown a nice approach. Ricky trying to ring one up from 65 feet away. He'll have to settle for the par. And, yeah, just like a few other times, whenever 
Steve has been at that kind of tester circle edge, you know, kind of position. It seems like he's been able to capitalize every time today. Yeah, he's putting really well in these conditions. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, trying to knock the basket over there from 18 feet is Calvin. Saving the par. An evidence of a good, a well-constructed disc golf basket. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, if the hurricane didn't blow it over, I, I don't know if Kelvin thinks he's going to, but. Oh, the granny toss. <laughs> uh, and the smirk. Yeah, there's a good smirk there, because uh, that's just ridiculous. All right, Jerm, we've moved over to hole 17. Now, it feels like a really similar tee shot to what we see on hole number two. Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, you're just trying to that low, wide backhand. The uh, only thing that I think makes 17 a little bit more fun is that there's the added option of going the equally challenging low sidearm out to the left, um, whereas two is very specific and really only one option. Uh, two does offer multiple options. And you even see Sarah Hokum going a sidearm right up the middle, which is way tighter than the out left option, but uh, she's executed it many times over. And she's done very well for herself at this event. I think she's won it several times. Well, I feel like if there, if we're going to see a skip ace on any hole, this is definitely the hole we'd see it on. It just yeah. sets up really well for that sharp edge righty shot to come in as Colette goes just deep of the basket. Yeah, you, I definitely could see that happening on this hole. There's been so many times when, in skins match or the Raz round or just in the tournament that you've seen a lot of drives come up here and flash the chains as Rick almost connects on a 70-footer as if it were a calm day, once again, somehow defying the physics that we all, the rest of us are playing in. And it looks like Brinster's just trying to be conservative. He's not he not trying to take any over par strokes, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's six under is a good score and kind of have to, you know, check your ego to lay up from that distance, but there's no need to leave yourself with a, a putt from any any anything further than 15 feet, you know, when it's – anytime it's blowing more than five miles an hour, you want to keep it close. And Chris makes a great birdie putt. Ricky with a nice par save. Kelvin, who's been sitting at 10 under for a couple holes, trying to move to 11. You can see the excitement in his stance, really. <laughs> Uh, he is he's stoic from C tiers to to majors. You know, he he is just the same way every time, and that's what makes him so consistent. And that allows him to build on his game. And and um, you know, you know what you're gonna get from Calvin Heimberg. Oh yeah, oh yeah, playing. So Kelvin has a two-stroke advantage. You have to assume he's leading at this point. I mean, he's just oh. him and Ricky have just been playing so well, and here he is trying to pipe one down on 18. The leader of this event will certainly come from this card. Are you kidding me? He gets through everything, and <laughs> just on the left side of the fairway, which on this hole, when you get that much distance off the tee, you will certainly take just off the fairway. That is not a problem. And this is the least eagleable of the par fives, yet it has been done before a few times. Um, a great tee shot that gets past that big row of trees there can set up the big roller second shot. And it's all about staying clean, and I, I don't want to make it sound all too obvious, but it's just when you're staying clean for 80 to 90% of this tee shot, that's when you're yeah. going to be setting up really well to score on it. It's when you hit yeah. early, you're going to be scrambling and working really hard with no right. chance at an eagle or bird even. These are four of the best drives you're ever going to see consecutively uh, on this course. I mean, on this hole specifically. And Chris is in pretty good position. Like you were saying, sometimes you may get good distance here, but still be a little out of position. Uh, Chris had a little bit of both there, some decent distance and position, and Ricky's 
Well, yeah, I mean, of course he's going with his newfound <laughs> champion <Gosh>. Valkyrie. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> and that tree put it down on the perfect roller angle. And look at this thing cruising. That is just silliness, man. He can't even throw – he tried to throw a bad shot that time, Terry, and was unable to throw a bad shot. <laughs> We're going to see a, a very tight roller here by Brinster. Not a lot of room. He has got well, a, such a unique approach to his backhands, and um, he's harnessed it. He's utilized it his entire career, and he's obviously had a Hall of Fame career because of it. And uh, But, yeah, you don't see many people approach their shot the way that Steve does. So Kelvin's fortunate to be just on the edge. We'll see if that gets a little skip or flare up. Isn't oh, a lot of ground oh. <laughs> it looked like it had that perfect amount of height, but uh, didn't quite get to the edge and still a well-executed second shot. Set him up for most likely a very easy birdie to finish up this already incredible round. And he's knocking on the door of a 12 under, which I'm sure in these conditions is going to be rated very high. Just one more good shot left, and he did not do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised he didn't go with the wide skip hyzer, but uh, I guess he's just trying to eliminate unnecessary angles and trying to keep the disc as flat as possible, which is generally really great advice in this wow. kind of wind. And a Steve, what is it, a fourth sidearm of the round. You know things are getting crazy when you see that many sidearms. <laughs> <laughs> well, this much practice, he's going to be better at it than most people. And Rick just kind of laying up that eagle putt. And it, it's got to feel like a, a little bit of a squandered opportunity after a, a, yeah. a not-too-bad uh, drive. It just kind of feels like not getting up and down the way he did. Um that one's maybe one he'd like back, as you'd say. Yeah. And Colette unable to collect. I see what you did there, Jim. Thank you. So you still see a little bit of wins. I think we're going to see things calm down somewhat during that second round. Of course, we invite you guys to join us for round number two. Everyone's going to be treated, like you mentioned, to a great buffet lunch. Uh, probably the best lunch of the entire year that you'll find out at a disc golf course, or uh, maybe even outside of a disc golf course. I thought for a second that you were inviting our viewers uh, to the greatest lunch of the year. Uh, I mean, if, if you want to come just for the lunch, it might not be a bad idea. Nantucket's a pretty beautiful place. And uh, Heimberg, uh, I think with an unofficial 1052 rated round, he shoots the 11 under. Waisaki right on his tail with a 1045 rated round. Steve Brinster with a seven, and Chris just over par. All right, Big Germ, we'll see you in the round number two this afternoon. All right, we'll see you.